Hello and welcome. God bless all that the Lord will bless through this. Um, just to start us off, I'm going to start off and read about six verses in 2 Kings 8. <clears throat> then spoke Elisha unto the woman, whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go thou and thy household, and so journey wheresoever thou can so journey. For the Lord has called for a famine, and it shall come upon the land seven years. And the Lord arose, and did after the saying of the man of God, <clears throat> and she went with her household, and so journeyed into the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years, and the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines, and she went forth crying unto the king for her house and for her land. <clears throat> and the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha has done. And it came to pass, as he was talking, the king, however, how he had restored a dead body to life, that, behold, the woman whose son he has restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, and she told him, so the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers, and all the fruit of the field, since the day that she left the land until now. <clears throat> and so I was feeling the Lord leading me to read that passage. And I was kind of like meditating on the passage and everything. And then something I had totally forgotten about it was so many years ago. I think I was still a teenager at that time. It was way back in high, uh, high school. I was at a church at the time out in South Holland. And <clears throat> I think it was one of my dad's cousins or something to that effect. And she was basically saying, it's like, yeah, you should be... I th or something to... I can't remember. It's so long ago. But she was saying something about... Um, preaching or calling the preach or something to that effect and something about like my stuttering how God healed me of that and all that stuff and I just told her flat up it's like yeah maybe when I'm 25 and that was kind of the main theme or the main thing that God was kind of highlighting and why did I say 25 because I know God was calling me to preach Okay, but I knew God had to do a work on my heart first because I was unwilling at that age. Granted, I was still willing and he, I was more willing to do so when I got into college to preach. But there was still that work that needed to be done in my heart. And so God was working on my heart in all these years. And, you know, at age 20, 35... That was almost seven years ago, because my birthday is right around the corner, and I'll be 42. And God was kind of linking that whole passage about, you know, being in a famine and preaching, and how that was symbolic, I guess. He was saying, yeah, you, you were the th at 35, but 35 plus 7 is 42. And so at that age, I'm getting, my birthday is right around the corner on April 10th. And it was interesting about how he said you know, he'll restore the fruits that that land was supposed to produce over that seven year time frame. And there was something that the guy was kind of quoting me. Yes, it, that was a lot, that was, had to do with a lot of money and all that stuff back then. But what about spiritual fruit? Does anybody actually ever think about that? About God restoring the spiritual fruit in your life that you're able to produce. And I, God is able to do so. He's able to restore the, the spiritual aspect of your life. So many people like want to chase after money and money is, you know, um, is needed at times. Yes, I'm not going to deny that. 
But what about the spiritual aspect, your spiritual fruit? You know, the fruit of the Spirit. You know, the Spirit to go and to preach and to love, to have faith, to have hope. You know, temperance, all those good fruits of the Spirit. You know, the Lord can restore those. I think so many times we have been in a lot in this land and a spiritual um, drought. There has been a spiritual drought of preaching of God's word. And I believe God is really starting to restore a lot of that and really starting to send some rain in the sense of, you know, the spirit flowing and being poured out. You know, <clears throat> we got to pour ourselves out as that rain. And it's when that rain hits, then things start to flourish. You know, right now it's getting close to about the springtime. And you see a lot of this stuff is actually kind of grown. It's uh, just dried up. It's kind of dry. But you know what? God can bring green life. You know, the trees aren't green yet. But I believe God's kind of restoring certain things. I don't fully understand all that he's speaking to me. I'm just relaying what he has spoken to me. And whatever blessing he's going to be bestowing, I don't fully understand. But I think it's more on the spiritual level of things, too. And there can be some financial blessings from that also. I don't fully understand it all. I just know what God was speaking to me. He was talking about how, when I was younger, how I said, yeah, when I was 35, I'll preach. And I think God was saying, it's like, yeah, you've been in that seven-year drought. You had to be sent away for that seven years before you could start preaching, before you could start moving in the greater things of the Lord. And I believe the Lord was working on my heart in all those years. And all those times and all those seasons. And a lot of people don't see all those things that God does. But eventually over time they start becoming a reality. Because you know what's done in the secret is also re often revealed out in the open. So what have you been cultivating all this time? What have you been cultivating in the secret place of the Lord? Have you been cultivating all that fruit? That spiritual fruit? You know, you got a fork in the road, <laughs> literally to say. Question is, are you going to continue to let God work on your heart and mature you? And in his time, he'll raise you up. And it's got to be a work of the heart that's got to be done. Are you willing to take that path? In Jesus' name, amen.